Rebel Inc. Escalation. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. A unique and deeply engaging political, military, strategic simulation from the creator of Plague Inc. That was a good game. Balance competing civilian and military priorities and deal with a deadly insurgency in order to stabilise a war-torn country. This, guys, is a strategy game where it puts you in command of everything. Civilian, government, military, after a country has fallen to a foreign army. Uh, let's say a dictator has been kicked out of a country. Um, there's a vacuum there. There's insurgents springing up. And there's chaos. There's no government. You're in charge. You have to make every single decision. You decide whether there's coalition troops come in, you decide whether to raise a, a, an army of native people, you decide whether there's going to be elections, women's rights, you decide on everything, the infrastructure, which ones you should put first, should you go for uh, water, sanitation, should you go for infrastructure, for the road systems, should you go for electricity, communications, everything has to be redone in the country. Now the country is broken down into small zones and when you click on a zone you get information uh, with regards to the, the unrest there, what's going on, what they need, what kind of a zone it is. Is it an agricultural zone? Is it a, um urban zone? And things like that. So you have to decide what's best to put down there. They'll actually tell you. Uh, there'll be a little graphic saying what they kind of need there. So that's how you know what to, what to put down. But there's a lot of zones on the map. And to win the game, you've got to turn every one of them zones friendly green bright green and across the top of the screen you'll see a bar that is the progress of you unifying the country again and getting everything back to normal and there's also a little meter on the right which is your reputation if that hits bottom it's game over now to make things harder um, the people don't really like you so you have to win their trust by um, putting in the right things in place but there's insurgents out there there's people that just want you out of their country and they will gain force and momentum if you allow them to spread so you've got to hit them hard but the problem is the only way you can eradicate um, the insurgents from a zone is to completely surround that zone with forces and then send further troops into where they are so they have nowhere to run nowhere to hide and they will be wiped out obliterated if you don't have enough troops to do that then the best you can do is contain them somewhere by surrounding their locations. Usually the mountains is where they start. Try and surround the mountains, keep them contained if you like, um, and then try and win the hearts and minds of the, the rest of the country while you're keeping the insurgents contained. And then once you kind of get towards the end of the game and you've got everybody on your side and there's just these pesky insurgents, then you can bring in some reinforcements and absolutely annihilate them. Now I say bring in reinforcements at the end because you only get a certain amount of troops. You get four units of regular troops that you can train up from the country that you're in and they will stay there forever. You can also get four coalition units to come in. Now, the coalition troops, they will want to go home after they've done a couple of tours of duty, which isn't long. You can then pay them to stay longer, then they'll want to go home again, and you can pay a bit more to get them to stay, but eventually they're going to go, and if they go towards the end game here, you could be left in a really shit situation. So you've got to kind of plan this out carefully. You need a bit of luck as well because some of the things that happen are a bit RNG. Um, it can bite you in the ass. But the good thing about this game is before you even start it, you can select lots and lots of different variables as to how the game plays. Now these come in the form of advisors and things like that. So um, for example, the basic one that you start with, because all of them are locked until you've actually completed a game and won a game with the, the current advisor, which is a civil servant, you will be paid with him um, at the end of each month, which makes it really easy to get money because if something bad happens, you've only got to wait a little while before you get paid and you can buy your way out of it. The next advisor, the economic one, will only pay you once a year, so you have to budget and keep money back or you will find yourself deep in the shit. The next one is a really good one. He's a military advisor. Now what this guy does, he allows you to buy military units and train them up from the get-go. Now normal modes with any other advisor, you cannot do that. You can only train up military units once the insurgents 
uh, make their presence known on the map. Now that's a problem because the local militia, the local army that you want to be training up, the green ones, they take ages to train um, and you can find yourself in a really bad situation before they get actually ready to deploy onto the field of operations on the map. Now all this makes for a really fun game and I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is a fun game. Now alright there's going to be people saying, Mac you're reviewing mobile games. Ugh. Well I'm reviewing games that were mobile games that's been enhanced for the PC. Now this could use a lot more enhancing. Um, there's a few little flaws in it where you can find that you're chasing and searching all over the bloody map. Uh, the currency's a joke. Um, your war chest to totally redo a country is $40. <laughs> $40. Hey, what? What? 10 days with old Meg? Can you really get 10 days with old Meg for $40? That was only five. I mean, it doesn't sound much, but when you consider you can get a whole pipeline of uh, sewage put in for two dollars, you know, I mean, that is just ridiculous that, that the developers done that. I mean, why would you do that? I mean, make it realistic for goodness sake, you know, there's that. Each game plays completely different. And like I say, there's different ways of playing with different advices, but there's only five maps and I kind of finished the game in four hours. Now granted that was on easy with only one win on medium. Now the difficulty is easy, medium and hard, but don't let that fool you. What easy means is hard, what medium means is f***ing hard, and what very hard means is <laughs> no f***ing chance mate. It's kind of brutal this game, but it's fun. It's fun. I'll tell you how fun this is, right? This is how fun this game is. I'd finished this review about two and a half hours ago but needed a little bit more footage so I went back in unlocked another advisor and I ended up playing for another two and a half hours and I thought F it I'm gonna redo my review because I wanted to say that because that's how much fun this game is now as well as the military stuff with that you're doing um, and, and containing the insurgencies you've got to win the hearts and minds of the people like I said so to do that the only way to do that is to put back the infrastructure to the country. So you need to get the sewage, the sanitation, the first aid, the hospitals, the teaching, the education, the road systems, the communications, the electricity, everything. And you have to start rolling that out. Now, if you start rolling it all out too fast, inflation goes through the roof and things cost ridiculous amounts of money and you end up having to sit there for a while till inf inflation drops. Also, the more stuff you buy, the more uh, chances of corruption there is getting into the fray. So you have to um, go into the, the government tab and start buying things and putting in measures to stop corruption and to bring corruption down. You've also got to watch the internationals because the world is watching through the news networks. They want to see that you're bringing in women's rights and things like that. So you have to be careful about things, the decisions that you make. And this is when the RNG comes in because not all decisions are cut and dry. I mean, a lot of decisions will say to you, look, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. If you do that, that's what's going to happen. Um, a lot of it requires you to have finances in place and if you don't have enough finances in place you might have to select the shit option but rng like i say does play a part in some of the decisions where you have literally just got to throw the freaking dice kind of and just hope for the best but it's very addictive it's very easy to play but it's very hard to master uh, the five maps are not really enough i would have liked to have seen about 10 maps in this at least um, I'm hoping when it's fully finished, and the price is going to go up by the way, um, so I've heard when it is fully finished with a lot more maps and different game modes like co-op and multiplayer, but I hope it brings a lot more maps in because it is a fun game, I enjoy it, each game can last between the, uh, 30 minutes and an hour depending on uh, how fast you go through it, but it, the fun little games that you can jump into and have, f and, uh, and have a blast in, it's kind of edgy you see stuff at times as well. You do get immersed um, in the game, and for me, it is worth a buy, even in its early access state. I just hope it gets a lot more love off the developer, because it's got really good potential, and I just hope it gets a lot more content.